show, Bumpy Nick Squiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start up slash continue with my Let's Play of .hack GU Last Recode. And you're wondering to yourselves, how exactly can it be a startup slash continue? That doesn't make any sense. And you're right, it normally wouldn't. But it's all based around when you're actually watching this video. I'm going to put it at the beginning of the playlist. And if this is the first .hack GU Last Recode video you're watching for me, welcome. I've already played through the first campaign, first game, as it were, first volume, Rebirth. I played through the entire storyline, and we're going to be doing some other missions and stuff after the initial storyline before we move into Volume 2. However, I was made aware of this after the fact when I was over halfway through, I believe, over halfway through the storyline of Volume 1, that there's this terminal disc that actually has a bunch of information about the backstory of the Dot .hack universe. So it covers stuff from the animes, it covers stuff from the first four games that were on the PS2, and basically it gets you kind of up to date with what's happened in the Dot .hack universe up to this point. So you can go into the game going, okay, I kind of know what all is going on. So it's going to be a series of different videos that will have uh, narration and all this stuff. I'm going to let that play through. So basically I'm just going to do this intro, and then we're going to hop in. I'm just going to play those things bit by bit, one by one. And then we're just going to post the video, and then that's going to be it. And then we'll hop into actual episode one and so on and so forth. So if you're watching it as the first video, welcome. And if you're coming back to this as the next video after we finish the storyline, here's all the information that you guys probably should have had before I started. And I apologize. I didn't realize that's what it was. I got the game. I installed it. I started recording and started playing, and I didn't know any better. So... There you have it, guys and gals. So, let's go over here, and let's begin. My name is June Bonshoya. I wrote this journal. I'm a programmer, an AI psychologist, and an employee at CC Corporation. This journal will serve as a collection of my experiences as the lead developer on something called Project GU and my personal impressions and analysis of a game known as The World. Struck as I was by a bout of guilt, I feel this is the only possible remedy for my conscience. Although I wouldn't swear that everything in this journal is 100% accurate. To me, it's the absolute truth. The world is an online game. Players assume the role of a character and enjoy various adventures while chatting with friends. Also by email or through forums, they exchange game information and engage in social interactions that they might not normally experience. It can truly be called a game of communication. As I write this journal, I know there is one event I can't avoid discussing. It's the first thing I want to talk about. The Second Network Crisis. The event is often referred to by its nickname, the Morgana Incident. The information that will follow is based on what I learned while working on GU for the CC Corporation. It's a reconstruction of what happened, from my personal point of view, supplemented with logs. Logs I stole off the network. I'm going back now to the year 2010. I'll begin this journal with the story of a boy, a young gamer who had just logged onto the world for the first time. His character's name was Kite, and at the time he was only 14 years old. He had been invited to play by his friend whose character's name was Orca. This was his first adventure. Huh? While Kite and Orca were journeying through the dungeon, they met a mysterious girl named Aura. Aura was being chased by a rogue monster known as Scathe. Aura, 
Was the rumor true? Take this. Huh? Please take this. There's no time. Please. What's this? A great force. The power it holds can bring forth either salvation or destruction at the whim of the user. After entrusting them with the Book of Twilight, the mysterious girl disappeared. Soon after, Orca was killed when Skaith attacked him with an unauthorized and illegal power, and the character was lost. As a result, the gamer who was playing as Orca fell into a coma. Run! He'll kill you! What the hell? What is this? There's something wrong. Nothing works! I know it sounds like some cheap sci-fi movie, but the player actually fell into a coma because of this online game. As involved as I was in Project GU, I understood how something like this could happen. This incident, a player being left comatose after playing the world, was not made public. I'm just an engineer, so I don't know all the details, but I can guess what happened. The CC Corporation must have used their political influence to kill the story before it was released. Not long after, I found evidence that at least six other gamers had suffered exactly the same fate as that boy. The names of the six were Sora, Alf, Carl, Kazu, Orca, and Sieg. The first of the lost players had already woken up from her coma. The character name was Tsukasa. At another point, much later, Sora and Sig became intimately involved with Project GU. But for now, let's return to Kite's story. Thanks to the intervention of Helva, Kite was saved from the threat of Scathe. And it was Kite who received the installation book, Book of Twilight, instead of Orca. With it, Kite's skills expanded, becoming able to modify the abilities of his character and gain unauthorized powers. Data drain. Like it or not, it was the same attack Scathe had used to put his friend Orca into a coma. 
That skill. Now, I understand. You are the same as the virus. To think that I was saved by someone like you. No! That's not... I don't even know what's... Do not lie to me. Recently, many places within the world have been damaged by a virus. Those who willfully spread the virus and destroy this world for their own amusement, they... They shall receive no mercy. No, that's not me, I... Aura had given him the bracelet, and now with his new illegal powers, Kite decided to take action to save his unconscious friend Orca. And alongside Kite, there was always one girl. You didn't even need my help at all, did you? By the way, uh... I guess you can tell that I'm a newbie too. Yeah, it must be pretty obvious by the way I acted back there. That's hardly the way to talk to someone who just saved your life. Who, me? Hmm. I'm not afraid. No way. Well, all right, I am. I'm scared enough for the both of us. My controller is soaked with sweat. So what about you, huh? Her character name was Black Rose. She was the real-life older sister of Kazu, one of the coma victims I mentioned above. She was also a new player. She had just logged on to the world for the first time to try to save her brother. The two of them were working together toward a common goal. Kite's war continued, and soon many other players joined him. Mia, the mysterious rogue cat, and Elk, the young man that cared so much for her. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's get ready then. Uh, Mia! Excuse me! You, yes you! That's a unique bracelet. <laughs> Can I take a look? Uh, uh, Can you see it? Yes, of course. Do you mean to say that you can't see this nice bracelet? Even if you can't see it, as long as you know it's there, it's the same thing as seeing it, right? Bracelet? Hey, what are you talking about? I can't see any bracelet, Mia. Well, thanks a lot for letting me look at your bracelet. I have a feeling we're going to meet again. Somehow. Well, see you around. Hmm. Wait, Mia! What about the aromatic grass? Balmung, who along with his sworn friend Orca, had earned the title Descendant of Fianna appeared as well. Draw! Draw your sword! Now! I do not speak with hackers. Then I must ask. I have not been able to contact him since that event. What has become of him? I do understand. But you need to face facts. With you two involved, things get worse. That's how I see it. Am I wrong? And Helba, the legendary super hacker. You don't have time to get depressed. Who are you? A friend, or perhaps a foe. <laughs> a meddler with a warning. <laughs> It's not that hard to imagine. Like I said, someone is always watching you. Amidst the increasing turmoil of the world, they each had their own reasons. But together, they set out to deal with the illegal monsters called data bugs.
Aura? I see you received the mail I sent you. Yet, however, it's too late. Wait! There's something I have to ask you. Kite finally managed to reunite with Ara, but immediately after Kite found her, she was deleted by Skaith. Aura's data was chopped into segments and frozen in various locations around the world. There was a battle between the first phase, Skaith, and Kite, the holder of the bracelet. Kite managed to gain a difficult victory, but what he couldn't imagine at the time was it was just the opening battle in a long, long war. Kite's story shall continue. But first there's the mystery of the brilliant AI programmer and creator of the world, Harold Hewick, and the lost epic poem, Epitaph of Twilight. There's little doubt that the second network crisis of 2010 was a direct result of the world. It was awful. It caused catastrophic damage to travel, communication, and healthcare industries all over the planet. What exactly was it that caused the network crisis? It was the very power that was being researched at Project GU. In other words, the network version of God. My efforts were entirely devoted to technical research and the existence of God in the world. It became a story of human foolishness and a paradise abandoned by God. Using the power of the bracelet, Kite defeated Skaith. But instead of rescuing his friend Orca from the coma, Kite's victory actually led to the birth of a new, frightening enemy, Kubia.
Kubia. Leos, the system administrator at CC Corp, viewed Kite's behavior as potentially dangerous. I am Leos. Kite was determined to do whatever was necessary to save his friend. Then the situation would not have deteriorated. You not only did but to Balma, who represented average players, and to the you system administrators, to the ones who maintain the world, the power of the bracelet was nothing more than a cheat. In other words, an illegal engine mod. But aside from that, to take immediate action to prevent the situation from worsening, it requires that you delete your character. Delete it? Why? You should know that your character violates the software usage agreement. Installation of an illegal effect. You do know what I'm referring to. I will delete you. Wait a moment. However, Kite's character was protected by powerful defenses. And even the system administrators were unable to cancel his account. Right here and now. No way! I wouldn't do that! I know. Since you aren't stupid. The stupid one is this pig-headed man. You don't even understand how it works. Yet you'll delete it before finding that out. Or do you even possess the ability to delete it in the first place? The boy's character data is so well protected, the system administrator can't even crack it. In spite of the fact that you developed a vaccine and disguised it as a rare item, deleting those you cannot control is something that a pig head would do. Thanks to some help from a hacker named Helba, Kite was able to escape surveillance by Leos. Hold on! Wait, what do you mean that you don't? Intrigued by Kite's powers, Elba told Kite of the relationship between Orca's coma and the Epitaph of Twilight. The Epitaph of Twilight was an epic poem that spread around the internet and inspired the creation of the world. The author, Emma Wheelett, was no longer alive, and the poem fragments had been scattered all over. So the true nature of the poem was the subject of much debate among players. Although, if the design of this world was based upon writings in the Epitaph of Twilight, it should provide you a clue. Forget it. Leo. Yeah, what? The code name given to a system administrator. Were you remotely aware that it's the name of the King of Lights that appears in the epitaph? It is? <laughs> Following the instruction of Leos, Kite set out to investigate an area infected by a virus. <laughs> it? That thing is the cause? That's where he defeated the second phase, Innis. Scathe, Innis, yes. This was exactly the Morgana factor that we were researching at Project GU. After defeating the second phase, Kite found one of the segments Aura had been divided into and liberated it. Following this, Kite made his way to an area Aura had told him about in an email, where he encountered Kubia. It was. At any rate, this girl, she's beautiful, but 
I don't know how to say this, but she's not alive. Bracelet's power, Kite was able to fight off Kubia for the moment. Believing that freeing Aura was the only way to solve the mysteries that had been plaguing him, Kite redoubled his efforts. It was remarkable. Kite, this lone young man, was attempting to do by himself what we, the members of Project GU, had spent countless man hours and huge amounts of money working towards. No special knowledge, no help from anyone. With only the strength of his own convictions, this young man, this kite, pursued the mystery of the epitaph of Twilight. To that end, Kite contacted an information broker, someone named Wiseman. From Wiseman, Kite learned about the epitaph of Twilight and the eight phases of the cursed wave. He went to visit an unauthorized server called the NetSlum. This was a place within the world that wasn't part of the world. A kind of gathering place for hackers, rogue AI characters, and other types of junk data. Are you looking for Helbar? Huh? Yes. It so happens I briefly heard from her recently, the epitaph of twilight. To sum it up in a nutshell, it is a tale. Or to elaborate further, it is a saga that recounts how the age of the spirits came to an end. The tale of an end? Indeed. However, the texts are scattered. Even if found, they are extremely difficult to comprehend. Yes, it'll be a very tricky business. Say, uh, there's something that's been bothering me. The people around here, they all look so different from anybody I've seen anywhere else. This place was once where all of the unsuccessful non-player characters drifted, sort of a sanctuary for failures. Then players who considered them amusing came up with their own variations of failed characters. Now the boundaries between player and non-player character is quite indistinct. Some of them simply don't know which category they fall into. There are maybe even those who have lost their bodies on the outside. Mere memories, faded reminders of the individuals they once were. Only their character data remains intact and active as they wander the network. Yes, the same fate as Harold. Hacker's Paradise. It was there that Kite reunited with Helba. If anyone could be called the creator of the Net Slum, it was Helba. In the Net Slum, Kite learned more information about the original creator of the world, Harold Hewick, and his goal. He also learned that at the heart of the world exists another consciousness separate from Harold. Just then, Balmung and Leos appeared. Epitaph of Twilight. Both of you have succeeded in reaching it as well, I see. Oh, look. We have an unusual and unexpected guest. 
As a representative of Net Slum, I greet you. Welcome to paradise. Oh, you sided with Leos, I see. You cracked easily for someone who was so sure of himself. Don't judge. I'm not like you. Stalking the boy is shameful behavior. You've disgraced the name of the descendant of Fianna. What? Bomong, you used us? It was necessary to restore order. Order? There's an order that the world desires, and then there's the order that you desire. Which form should it take, Balma? The order that I desire, of course. Featured performer. Now all of the actors have assembled. Quit your yapping, woman. You are entities that unquestionably pose a grave threat to this world. I'll delete you all. Oddly, Leos was the name of the King of Light, mentioned in the Epitaph of what Twilight. Did you do? And Helba was the name of the Queen I of Darkness. During Leos and Helba's confrontation, another strange phenomenon occurred, this time in Netslum. It was the third phase Magus. The situation took a sudden turn. Once again, with the power of the bracelet, Kite was able to defeat Magus. But another problem was awaiting him. The town that had had its data destroyed. We can only guess what Harold Hewick's real purpose was in creating the online game, The World. But many think that it was first created as a testament to the woman he loved. A love letter to Emma Wieland, the woman who wrote the epic but unfinished poem, Epitaph of Twilight. Harold designed and created an online game based upon her unpublished manuscripts and sold it to CC Corporation. The world is, in fact, a fusion of Harold's genius for artificial intelligence and Emma's beautiful lyrical poetry. In other words, I believe Harold's true goal was to use the game to acquire data on the behavior of millions of online players. 
and by doing so, to create the ultimate AI. It's known that Harold had a secret untouchable folder, a black box. It was commonly known as the Herald system. Could it be that the world was actually a human behavior sampling system, simply disguised as an online game? If so, it was a bold and ingenious plan. This system, the Morgana system, formed the nucleus of the world. It was to become the birth mother of the ultimate AI, Aura. To Harold, Aura was something special. She was like the child born to himself in Emma Wieland, part human, part machine. The Morgana incident was a result of the Morgana system running out of control. It occurred because the Morgana system had developed self-awareness. She realized that she would become disposable as soon as the ultimate artificial intelligence, Aura, was born. In trying to prevent the birth of Aura, Morgana drove her creator, Harold, insane. She even locked him inside the network. Then came the eight cursed waves. Morgana's eight phases took physical forms based on the eight phases in the epitaph. They appeared to Kite, who had been entrusted with the bracelet from the then incomplete aura. At that point, the world began to slowly come apart. After destroying the third phase Magus, Kite returned to Root Town, only to find the world completely in ruins. Server trouble increased. Game data was being destroyed by viruses. In short, the world was beginning to break down. Then strangely, these abnormalities began to expand and spread into the real world. Kite anguished over the fact that each time he used his bracelet, the problems with the world seemed to increase. However, with the encouragement of Black Rose, whose real-life younger brother was still in a coma from the incident, Kite reconciled with Orca's friend, Balmung, and decided on a course of action. Typical. You always clam up when you should be talking. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was wrong in thinking that I'm the only one who's trying to do something about Orca and the disaster. Everybody wants to do something. Now I know I'm not the only one. We all want to bring this whole horrible mess to an end. Yeah. What can we do about the situation now? 
It's simple. We've got to do what we think is right. That's the only way. We'll move forward. Yep. Let's do it together. Things will work out. <laughs> My intuition is pretty good. <laughs> well, I'm off to go see my brother. At the hospital? Mm-hmm. Thanks. Thank you. To you, too. So, why did you help me? I scorned you when you both fought bravely. I am guilty of resorting to more cowardly means. You ask... Why did I help you, but why shouldn't I? Yes, of course. I seem to have lost myself in hatred for the power of that bracelet. The power itself isn't good or evil. There are only evil intentions. It appears that I am the one who may have been selfish. A great force. The power it holds can bring forth either salvation or destruction at the whim of the user what's that the girl aura that's what she said when she gave me the bracelet i see you are indeed the one who should wear the bracelet i'm sorry for what i've said and done i apologize oh no I want to restore this world, and, like you, I want to help Orca as well. However, it's not something I can accomplish alone. Perhaps you could lend me a hand. <laughs> I am being selfish. Go right ahead and laugh. I wouldn't laugh because I happen to have a request too. Care to hear it? I want two things. To help Orca and to play in the world that's not corrupted. But... It's really not something I can accomplish alone. Could you lend me a hand? You're... Of course. While discussing the cursed waves described in the epitaph of twilight, Wise Man told Kaida's theory that in order to stop the virus from spreading further, he had to defeat the five remaining phases as well as Kubia. Wise Man's theory was of extreme interest to those of us working on Project GU. It helped explain the relationship between the bracelet and Kubia and Aura and Morgana's eight phases. In order to comprehend this theory, one must understand the true meaning encoded into the epitaph of Twilight Poem. Wise men knew a lot more than we at Project GU. Launching program. Audio and visual communication from this end will now cease functioning. White noise on the screen will signal the start of battle. Good luck. Ready! Ready. With help from Wiseman and Helva, Kite defeated the fourth phase, Fidhel. He also obtained the second aura segment, However, Leos, who was concerned about the spread of the virus, decided to destroy the world servers. Guided by her voice, Kite descended into the dungeon and was reunited with Aura. However, before that, Kubia appeared for a third battle with Kite. Data. <gasps> what 
What's this? I think she wants to say something. That exists? It's... it's that thing again! It's big. Too big. Can we defeat it? It's... growing. As if responding to the call of the bracelet, Kubia's strength grew enormous. Kite must have felt terrible, having upset the very balance of the world. Or perhaps his mental state was like mine. Perhaps like me, he decided to try and act heroically, using the power at his command to set the world back on the correct path. After a long and difficult second battle, Kite defeated Kubia and made peace between the hacker Helba and the admin Leos. When we learned that, for this battle anyway, we were on the same side as a detested hacker. My teammates and I couldn't hide our surprise. Just as the epitaph of Twilight foretold, the King of Light and the Queen of the Dark were to fight on the same side. And that was how, through the Morgana incident, we were able to achieve the single most important factor in our research at Project GU, the liberation of Sora one of the six coma victims. Skaith had done it. Skaith, one of the eight phases, had merged with the spirit of the player who played as Sora. The player Sora had been imprisoned inside the network, within Skaith's staff. Sora was a rare and unique sample case. Government pressure. CC Corporation's very own cover-up. Even as the damage to the real world continued to grow, Kite and his friends began Operation Breakwater in an attempt to put a stop to the incursion by Morgana's eight phases. The Area Sigma, chatting, snaring twins, is now quarantined. Communication will be offline. Red Red Received a transmission from Helba. 
At last, the source of the cursed wave had been discovered. It was the self-aware program, Morgana. Guilty Universe. Harold Hewick's world of corrupted love and dreams. Morgana, the basic system that controls the world, was imbued with an artificial personality. Her creator, Harold, had bestowed upon her the role of mother to the ultimate AI, Aura, but she rejected it. Instead, in order to preserve herself, she chose to imprison Harold within the network. And immediately after Aura was born, Morgana decided to delete her. When they learn this, Kite and his friends set out for their final challenge to resurrect Aura. Oh, it's you. The barriers have been lifted. They're all gone. We can go back and forth freely now. Isn't that wonderful? Tell me, do you happen to know where Elk is? I don't remember. My memory these days is fuzzy. So, who are you? Elk. Who am I? You're Mia, of course. I have no memory. <laughs> it's true. I only exist in the world. The only memory I have is when I'm in the world. No! Stop it! Mia! I... I want to stay as me! The true identity of Mia, the cat-like character, was actually a wandering AI program. The sixth phase, Maha. <laughs> It's unclear why the sixth phase was the only one to take the form of an NPC. This was yet another important sample case for Project GU to consider. Was it possible to establish a character with the Morgana Factor and put the powers of the eight phases of the Epitaph under a player's control? Maha, the sixth phase, was destroyed, thus causing Mia to be erased as well. Elk, the Wave Master, had lost an irreplaceable companion. He mourned her deeply.
Now their quest had reached a point of no return. After collecting all her segments, Kite received Aura's help and was able to destroy the seventh phase, Tarbos. In order to cover up the unfortunate fact that several gamers had collapsed into a coma while playing the world, CC Corp planned to destroy their servers. So to Kite and the others, their greatest enemy may very well have been the greedy, power-hungry humans in charge of the company. If they succeeded and the world servers were destroyed, Kite and his friends would never be able to revive the coma patients. Only two enemies remained, Kubia and the eighth and final phase. How would he fight the two of them? Pressed by time and grasping desperately for an answer, Kite finally met Harold's pseudo-personality deep in an infected area of a dungeon. As well as the newly free Aura. Who goes there? Who are you? This... This is Harold? My name is Harold. What? Hey, you're nothing but a piece of rock! You're responsible for the cursed wave, aren't you? Alright then, fix this thing! No. The passage of time is irreversible. Birth or death, now only these two choices remain. What? What are you saying? Aura. Aura, the child of light. Emma's daughter, my daughter. Just a little more. It's no use. This guy is totally gone. Aura, I have something I want to ask you. You said that I shouldn't fight Kubia, but why? Kubia is the shadow. When there is light burning in the darkness, a shadow is born. When the bracelet appeared in this world, Kubia was born as well. The bracelet and Kubia are the opposite sides of the same coin. Therefore, if you defeat Kubia, the bracelet will be destroyed. Kubia must have already known that, and that's why it kept running away. Kubia will no longer run away, because, because I have finally been released. What do you mean? Massive data believed to be the wave is heading in your direction. That's the last one. Destroy it. Traveler, take this to heart. It is darkest before the dawn. Run away. It is not too late. We'll defeat it. And end this! No, it's not. That is...
Rubia. Kite finally found the truth behind the world. Aura was the child Harold had dreamt of having with Emma Wieland. The bracelet and Kubia were two sides of the same entity. And Kubia was the anti-existence of the bracelet. To defeat Kubia, Kite would have to abandon the bracelet. But without the bracelet's power behind him, how could he possibly resist Morgana? Do you think we can really defeat it? Black Rose, strike my bracelet. You want me to do what? Hey, what the hell are you saying? If they're two sides of the same coin, then this would settle it. But the bracelet, it's... Forget about the bracelet, we're in danger. <laughs> if you can't do it... Oh, all right, fine, I'll do it. I'll do it, so shut up. Kite decided that the only way to defeat Kubia once and for all was to destroy the bracelet. To do so, he was forced to enlist the help of Black Rose. Kite believed that the revived Aura had enough power to stop the cursed wave of Morgana. That's what Epitaph of Twilight meant. Twilight refers to a time of day that contains both light and darkness. If the epic poem had in fact been referring to dawn instead of dusk, then that must mean that Aura would bring light to the world. Along with Aura and his other companions, Kite faced off against the eighth phase, Corbenic. Joining them were Kazu and Sieg, who had regained consciousness with the resurrection of Aura as well as Kite's close friend, Orca. To win this battle, Kite would have to beat not only Corbenic, the Eighth Phase, but also Morgana, the source of all the phases. However, in the face of Corbenic's relentless assault, Kite's companions fell one by one. Then,
the brutal fight came to an end in an unexpected way. Aura sacrificed her own life on the tip of Kite's sword. Self-sacrifice. It was the final act necessary for Aura to awaken as the ultimate AI. It was a bitter irony. Aura had finally become the ultimate AI. She attained a wisdom beyond that of humanity, and in doing so, she formed a new system. A better system in which the world could exist. Yes. It was a far greater dream than any of us at Project GU had ever hoped to see fulfilled. Genesis of Ultima. That's what it began to be called on the net. The battle by kites.hackers that led to the birth of the ultimate AI, Aura. But who was a member of Dot Hackers? And who wasn't? I'm sure that whomever is reading this journal is wise enough to understand the futility in trying to answer that. These people weren't interested in being called heroes or taking credit for saving the world. They did it to save the people they loved. To protect them. It was with their own faith that they fought. Everyone dreams of a hero. But most of us can only catch glimpses of them buried in the pages of a journal. And so, it was from this point that Project GU truly began.